kids aren't advancing. <laughs> Nothing's happening. There we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this quarterly community town hall for Area 1. I'd like to make a few administrative notes before we get started. Emergency exits on both sides of the theater and where you entered the building. Also, there's refreshments up there, so if you didn't get any, make sure you get some before you leave. Those are sponsored by Mitchell's Club today, so we'd like to thank Mitchell's Club for that. You passed the restrooms on your way in in the lobby. Um, I already talked about the food and beverages. Questions and answers, we got, we're going to do it throughout. So as a speaker finishes their portion, just go ahead and ask your questions. And they'll ask you if you have any questions. But also, if you have questions at the end, feel free to ask them. If you want to ask a question offline and you're not quite sure who the subject matter expert is, ask me and I'll get you pointed in the right direction. We are you streaming this today. So for those of you who are joining us uh, online, welcome. Um, and we're going to have some, some things to give away as we go through the, through the day. You can see here is our agenda, covering a wide variety of topics today. And with that, I'll turn it over to Colonel Scott, the Area 1 Commander. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Air Major. All right, so first, a uh, quick uh, welcome to the uh, town hall. We've got a lot of great things lined up for you today. Uh, I'd like to thank our, our very own Division Command Sergeant Major Spano for joining us today. Oh, oh let's give him a round of applause. So no one's ever going to accuse Sergeant Major of being shy or quiet. So thanks for your time today, Sergeant Major. For those of you joining us on Ustream, uh, I encourage you to get on board uh, the Facebook page now. Go ahead and find us and like us. And then if you've got questions during the town hall, tap it in there real quick. And we've got someone monitoring our Facebook page right now, and we'll be happy uh, to get you an answer. And so with that, uh, if I could have my next slide, please. One more. Okay. So we are approaching... Uh, the end of the winter, spring, and quickly transitioning to summer. And one of the things I'm most interested in is hearing from our, our community. You know, I need your feedback. One of the things I've been told is that feedback is a gift. And so I'm asking for our community to help us out in this venture. And so what we've done is we've built uh, a survey that's managed by a, a program called SurveyMonkey, and there are a couple of links that you can click on and take this thing. And it's very easy. It's simple, easy to use. And what it's going to do is help me understand which services and programs you use the most and whether or not it's good or not. I mean, those are the two simple questions for the services. And so um, I've got some of my team reminding me to make you know. So we have got computers hooked up right now. And I'm happy for you if you want during the, today to jump up and take the survey, knock yourself out. Um, you can take the survey. I understand that there's going to be some certificates uh, for some free stuff from our FMWR team. So a little bit of a, a little carrot if you can help us out with the survey. But the bottom line is it's on our Facebook page. Uh, you can see the screen capture there on our Facebook. And it says Community Survey. Click on that. Take the survey. It'll take you about five minutes, five to seven minutes, depending upon uh, how fast you read and how quickly you are with the mouse. And I would really, really, really appreciate if you guys can get the word out and, and take that survey. It's going to help us out. And so there's lots of different ways we in the Garrison community get feedback. We, uh, we do the AFAP. Uh, we had the 8th Army Commanders Conference. And so one of the other ways I like to do it is via online. So that way I get a, a much larger sampling of our community and hear from you. So uh, I think it's going to be great. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm going to change topics here real quick. I've got three things I wanted to talk about. This is number two. Area 1 is known for its sports programs. We've always had a great sports program, principally because most of us are type A personalities and our soldiers love sports. Okay, it goes hand in hand. But now what we've done, what I've done, 
is I've taken all the existing programs that are already established on behalf of our army and our garrison, and I'm wrapping them up into a, a new Commander's Cup program. Okay, And you can kind of take a look at why am I doing it and how is this going to affect Area 1. Well, the first piece, if you take a look at it, it's this business of resiliency. The five pillars of resiliency, our programs are designed to support those five tenets. I'm not recreating the wheel. I'm not developing new programs. It's principally going to be targeted towards our soldiers, our families, and our civilians who participate in these programs. All right. Every, and if I can get the next slide, please. Which programs am I looking at? That's just a sampling. Take a look at that. Boss, Warrior Adventure Quest, the First Sergeant Barracks Program, uh, Education, ASAP, Spiritual Retreats, Volunteerism, and there's many more. And so company commanders, battalion commanders, and brigade commanders, uh, I know that the, we just cut our op order this week, and the word's out on the street. This is going to commence on the 1st of July. It's going to last for our six-month period, and we're going to award the cup at the end of that six-month period. So it's no longer just about sports. It's going to be about all of those programs we have. And we've already got great traction in most of them, but I'm going to uh, recognize some of the units that are uh, getting after it. Next, please. And finally, let's talk a little bit about safety. Uh, <coughs> Memorial Weekend's upon us. Definitely feel the transition in the, in the climate. Okay, the heat. Watch out for the heat, gang. Uh, I worry about heat exhaustion and heat injuries with our soldiers and our civilians and our family members. So please, please, please watch yourselves. We're going to be opening the pool. You'll hear about that. It's going to open up this weekend. Sunburn's a big deal. Dehydration. So don't forget to drink some water and put on your sunscreen. But with that, don't forget to have some fun. Okay? I think we've got great programs here in Area 1, and I would like for you to enjoy them, but enjoy them safely. Okay, next please. And so, before I transition to the rest of the briefers, I'm open to some questions. Does anybody have any questions at this time? All right. Don't forget about our survey. Facebook, click like, and take the survey. Easy peasy. All right. With that, oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the fitness classes that are offered, and um, the budget is really short. I'm one of the trainers. I only have one class a week, and I'm a CrossFit trainer, and I've been wanting to get more classes so that soldiers can join. I've got a petition started already. Okay. Um, I wanted to know how we go about doing that. Come see me right after this, and I will link you up with Mr. Larry Butler, uh, Energy, tied into our CrossFit program. Okay. So okay. we've got... And I, Thank you for bringing up the topic, not just here at Camp Red Cloud, but all of our gymnasiums across Area 1 now have some kind of a CrossFit room inside it. We're, the last thing that we're getting ready to finish completion of is our Human Performance Center back up at Camp Casey, which is a much larger version of it. Mm -hmm. So we've got new kit purchased. It's going to be outfitted here soon. And so, But I appreciate the, your question. Can I add on to that? Absolutely. Uh, I got a, there's a non-commissioned officer I have, uh, he currently resides down in Yongsan, and he's like a certain level of CrossFit, Sergeant Smith, mm -hmm. and when he comes up here, he just told me today in an email that he's done all the paperwork, and now we have an affiliated CrossFit site called the Second and Non CrossFit or something. Indian Head CrossFit. Indian I can talk with him as well. I have a proof affiliate as well. Yeah. But um, when, when he comes here... And he said that there's other people that are also certified, so there'll be more people to instruct you're one of them, I'm assuming, or presuming. Uh, but, uh, you know, more activities by people like yourself with the passion to do stuff like that is great. And then it's infectious and contagious, and it gets family members and soldiers and, and other people that want to be involved with it because it, it gives people something to do. Because when you survey so our soldiers, they're like, oh, we have nothing else to do except go to the bill and go to the bill. Uh, so, you know, so we want to give them other excuses or other things to do, and that's just one of the many things, program. So, yeah, so the, the, the uh, MWR uh, director, he, he's the man that we can, that we're all got to center on and, and get that going, but uh, it's going to be a pretty good program, I think, in the field and build and build. We 
certainly have the guy and the facilities to focus your energy, and we'll get it done. So this, we will get more classes at, when this starts up? I, I believe so, ma'am. Because so I only I, have one class a week. So come see me afterwards, and we'll hammer out the requirements that you're interested in, and we'll get something put together. Thank you, sir. How's that sound? And, and your name, please? Norell Iyer. All right, Norell. Thank you. All right, great. Well, that's a great question. Are there any other questions out there? Okay. Uh, Facebook land. Who's monitoring my Facebook site? Any questions right now? All right, not yet. All right, super. I know. All right, so with that, Mr. James, if you could help us out. Take us through it. Okay, sir. I'm going to go over the next three months of uh, calendar for the community. Uh, as you can see, this calendar actually shows next week, which is May. Uh, we have the U.S. Memorial Day, of course, on Monday, uh, Korean Memorial Day on the 6th, and I think June is also beneficially deemed the month of changes of command. We have the USAG Casey on the 11th, um, two-tenths fires on the 19th, the 2ID change of command on the 24th, and the 8th Army change of command on the 27th, Yeah, as it stands today. Um, and then, not to be outdone, the last day of school, the 13th of June, and I'm sure the kids are happy about that. Moving into July, the Independence Day celebration at Camp Casey. If you haven't been to that yet, if you weren't, didn't make it last year, uh, MWR will talk more about it when they get up here. But that's a big event, a lot of fun, fireworks, all the, all the things you normally see in an Independence Day celebration. Um, we'll also have the softball tournament in conjunction with that, and then the softball championship, as you can see, on the 15th and 16th, and the month ends with a 10K run on the 27th. The month of August, we have Korean Liberation Day, and then we are going to have another community town hall, just like this one, except at Camp Casey CAC. That event will be at the Probably at the CAC. We're going to talk to AFIS about using the theater, but we'll see about that. Probably at the CAC. That's where it's reserved right now. But that is important because that time frame you'll see is the end of August. We're hoping that the school, and this is the normal routine, they're able to put out classroom assignments, bus schedules, those kind of important things to, to your children uh, starting that school year. And AFIS is going to talk about um, what's going on with the theater and stuff, but I'm going to kind of present a couple of options. Um, this theater is going to stop showing movies. It's not that CRC is being picked on. I think there's 150 or so around the Army that are, because of digital projection, are not going to be able to show movies. And so what I'm going to present is a couple of options. Um, option one, Camp Casey's Digital Theater just opened, showing great stuff. Um, so, but if you can't make it up there for some reason, we have a couple of options right outside the gate. And as you can see, right near Wijambu Station, in the Shinsegae Theater, 10th floor, that's where that CGV um, uh, theater is. And then the THC is right down the road within walking distance. And I'm going to show you their websites. This is also a handout, both sides, the map and this, out at the tables out here so you can get the website and everything. Uh, even if you don't read Korean, of course, the movies have the little pictures so you can see which, what the times are so you know when to arrive at the theater. Are there any questions about the calendar? Could we have an alibi? An alibi. Army birthday is on the 14th of June. The Army birthday on the 14th of June. We're also having a concert on the green the 14th of June. I failed that to note that. Okay, I will be followed by Mr. McLean. Yeah, Mr. McLean's going to come up, but I want to draw a prize <laughs> since I have the mic. All right, everybody get your tickets out. Here's the lucky winner. Last three numbers are 150. One five zero. I, I'm assuming they all begin with five fifty. One five zero. Oh, we got a winner. <laughs> See, it all changed now. That's right.
That's right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Dewey McLean. I'm with DPW Engineering. I'm uh, here to talk about a few key projects as well as in, uh, energy conservation updates. Okay, oops, Let's see, there we go. All right, let's just start out with, uh, we, let's talk about some of the projects that you're already enjoying at FY12. Obviously, we've, we've done some work at, at the uh, Hanson Gym. Uh, most recently, the West Chapel renovation is another project in FY12, a community-driven project that you're certainly enjoying, uh, Mod Hall renovation. If we moved down to uh, a Red Cloud. We had uh, similar activity. Uh, the theater was up. It's kind of uh, sad to hear that this, this theater is gonna, not, not going to show movies. I, I certainly enjoyed it. I'm in the CRC area, but I will take advantage of that uh, offering uh, to go outside the gate and uh, enjoy uh, uh, theaters as well. Uh, now, to, to move forward in FY13, in the Casey area again, uh, many, uh, I think the commander mentioned uh, Human Performance Center. That project's 90% complete, uh, will be available here pretty soon, and uh, uh, certainly you'll be able to enjoy that. Many of you attended, maybe probably 10 days ago or, or less, the Casey Theater Grand Opening. I was there. It was certainly an exciting event. Got to see uh, Batman do his, not Batman, who was it? Spider-Man do, yeah, Sp Iron Man. Yeah, he was a man. I got the last part right. He was a man to do his thing, and uh, that was quite enjoyable. Now, the Schoonover Bowl will open here soon as well. Um, the Schoonover Bowl, we had some challenges there uh, in terms of um, site, site preparation or, or, or site conditions, so it slowed us up a bit, but uh, we're moving forward. I think one of the, one of the uh, um, notable things about Schoonover Bowl, it will be a regulation size track and field. It will probably be one of the more modern facilities uh, on the pen, and we certainly uh, plan to hope, what well, we hope to get events uh, there that would uh, be worthy of that facility. Uh, and certainly it, it will, I, I kind of estimate the timeline somewhere maybe mid-June, uh, end of June before when that facility become available to everyone. Uh, and lastly, uh, in FY13 here in the CRC area, of, of a project you probably don't know much about uh, is a Concord Road repair. But that was a project that you know it's a lot. It's a lot of engineering associated with that. Uh, certainly, it, it provides benefits that a lot of your community members may not notice. But uh, those are still things that are being done, uh, pushed forward by the Gers Commander, and certainly executed by DPW. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about some of the things that you can do to help us in the area of energy conservation. Many of you are already experiencing uh, hot water turnoff. Now it's probably not a big deal. I guess a few months ago uh, when, you, you, when your hands was freezing and, you in, and a lot of other parts of your body was freezing, you thought that was a big deal. But uh, we, we will continue to garner saving, savings from that. We will garner, also garner savings if, because we plan to shorten up the time or lengthen the time in which we turn on AC. So the AC will not come on you know, now, it'll be a little further along. We have areas such as community areas that, that AC is on now, but certainly there are other areas within the, on the facilities that we will extend the amount of time before we turn on AC and we'll garner some saving, savings in that regard. Um, office equipment and those sort of things, you can continue uh, turning off your monitors, turning off those office equipment when you're not using those. Those, those will uh, continue to save us money. We can redirect those dollars toward other uh, needed activities here within the garrison. Okay, so as you can see, that total savings is estimated around 2.5 million, uh, which is uh, certainly a lot of money. Okay, are there any questions associated with DPW projects or energy conservation efforts? Sure. Yeah, we have. I think if Mr. If Mr. Downs is here, you could probably tell me those exact dates. I. I okay. Eighty-five degrees, three days in a row. Okay, so once we hit those temperature ranges and we hit eighty-five degrees, three days in a row, that is the trigger event for us to turn our air conditioning on. So we have not hit that yet. I know it's hot in some of the barracks on the upper levels. I have been through there and I understand that heat does collect up in those buildings and so it's going to be a little uncomfortable. And so uh, we are managing that as best we can and if we could just uh, be patient, I would appreciate it. That's right. So, but that's a great question. So are there any other questions like that? 
Yeah, and to, to add on to that, I mean, that, that, that what you saw earlier were 68 degrees and we have a plus or minus on either side of that. By us, you know, again, keeping that temperature, you know, low like that, that helps us even when air conditioning is, is on, we'll certainly still be efficient and not waste, waste that, uh, that energy. Any other questions? All right, looks like I was, uh, I get an opportunity to uh, pull, a, pull a, a number as well. So let's see if I pull my own number. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, the number is 174. 174. No 174? Uh, okay, let's try again. All right, this number is 204, 204. All right, we got a winner. Okay. All right, small, small little verification, the number's right, 204. Okay, there you go, enjoy. Uh, okay, looks like I will be followed by, uh, if there are, are there any other questions or no other questions, I'll be followed by Mr. Harris. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mike Harris from the uh, KCLC Elementary School Student Transportation Office. Um, on behalf of... Uh, our principal, Shelly Kennedy, she couldn't make it. Uh, apologize on her behalf. She couldn't make it today. She's, uh, we had our pre-accreditation visit this last week, so she's at the out brief right now. Okay, so we're rolling into the end of the school year. Just counted on my calendar. We have 13 and a half school days left. As you saw on the community calendar, uh, the last day of school is going to be on 13 June. That is a half day. But before we get there, we do have a couple uh, key points on the calendar we want to make sure that the community is aware of. Um, Tomorrow is our annual field day, so if you're out and about, stop by. We'll have some visitors coming in from the Songrong Kindergarten School out in Yanju, but we'll also be uh, um, out there with all of our students as well. So it should be a big event, PTO, and uh, everybody be out there cooking hot dogs and feeding the kids, so it'll be a fun event. Wear sunscreen. Uh, um, 4 June and 12 June, we're going to have our talent show as well as our end of year school award ceremonies, and those will be out at the Casey Theater. And then, thir as I said, 13 June, last day of school. Folks, that is a half day, so please make sure you're there to get your kids when they come off the bus. 18 June, near and dear to parents, 19 June, report cards are available. Okay, so if you want to pick them up to school, stop by on the 18th of June. If you want to mail, they will be mailed on the 19th, so one day window. First day of school. I know it's odd to talk about it, 26 August will be our first day of school for the school year 13-14. As far as our summer hours at the uh, school office, we're looking between 8 o'clock and 1500 every single day, uh, or Monday through Friday every day, except uh, we'll be closed 12 to 1 for lunch. And I'll seg segue that into um, furloughs, okay? Um, we fully expect to be furloughed. Uh, the sports staff will take 11 days starting probably sometime this coming month or this coming next month up through the end of the school year. Um, and I'm going to read it right off of the, right off of the um, news release that's on the DoDEA website, how it will affect the next school year. DoDEA schools will close for five days during school year 2013-2014 due to sequestration-related furloughs for DOD civilian employees. It will affect the teachers. We're expecting starting the new school year, we will have five school days that we will not be in class. The five things I can't tell you is those exact dates right now. But there will be five furlough days starting in the new school year between August and the end of September. Um, I know there's some anxiety among parents and stuff like that. We normally have a 183-day school year. We're, we're knocking that with the five days down. We're knocking it down to 178, and that's so we can preserve our accreditation and still meet our curriculum requirements and deliver quality education to our Warriors children. And that's all I got. Does anybody have any questions for me? Sir? So credit, 
accreditation will not be affected next year. Is that correct? No. Okay, great. What, what, they, what they've done is they went through and looked at how many days we actually need to keep our accreditation, and it's 175. So with a 183-day school year, we're bumping it down to 178. We have a three-day window. Obviously, you know, weather-related incidents like that, they do take that into consideration. But we'll meet the 175 for, to keep our accreditation. That's great. I appreciate it. And then, Lana, when, it, when it's your turn, can you mention furlough, just the current state of play from DECA's foxhole? Um, and I apologize for the audible, but I might as well talk about it now. So on behalf of the rest of the DOD civilians outside of the agencies from DODEA or DECA, our civilians are also going to experience a furlough uh, of 11 days. Okay, so 11 days starting on July 8th. So July 8th until the end of the fiscal year, which is the end of September, our civilians are going to have to be furloughed for 11 days. And so that's going to be managed at the uh, directorate level. And so it's my intent that we still operate all of our services as best we can. And so we're not shutting down an entire directorate any one day. So uh, more to follow, but for now, just know that that's out there. Thank you. Good job. Any more questions for the school? All right, I will be followed by FMWR updates, Mr. Jamie Hawkins. Okay, so before Jamie starts talking, this is our brand new director for FMWR. Let's give him a round of applause. Cool. Jamie, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, hit it away. Well, as a... Colonel Scott, I said, I'm the new leader for FMWR, and um, I come here from Battle Creek, Michigan. Battle Creek, Michigan is also the cereal capital of the world, so if you look on your box of cereals, you'll see your cereals come from Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, just a little bit of uh, trivia there. Anyways, I've um, been here approximately 14 plus days, and I'm um, getting caught up, coming up to speed on what's going on within the community. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Uh, questions? <laughs> okay. Um, we also have, which we're very fortunate now, is to have our new ACS director. She came on board on the 7th of May, uh, just a few days after I arrived. And uh, her name is Miss Cruz. You can visit with her at the ACS office at KC. We also have a new exceptional family member program manager coming on board as of uh, 1 July. So she'll be also available at the ACS building. The KC Outdoor Pool opens on the 24th of May with a pool party for all ages. We'll have food and beverages, um, nothing in bottles, and some entertainment as well, music, so you can go swim, do splish splash, and you know, rock and roll. Also, we have the, new, the Health and Human Performance Center scheduled to be operational as of 1 August, and that's what we were talking about earlier with the, the commander. Um, a lot of effort, a lot of good stuff will be coming into that program. And we look forward to uh, all of you, and especially those folks who would like to work with us in providing the services there. Our renovated bowling center at Camp Casey is scheduled operational by 4 July. We're talking about a very soft opening type um, event. And uh, to be in full operational status probably around the uh, end of July, beginning of August. Library improvements at Casey and Stanley. If you've seen some of the uh, library improvements, you've seen the new library at, uh, at Casey. It's um, a little smaller, but I think it's a lot better set, the setting as well. Uh, a lot of opportunities there to get on the email, look at the, new, the books we have, and some of the new programs they have there as well. Um, CYS, we're, pre pre we we're preparing for the national accreditation for CDC, and which basically means that uh, when we meet and uh, we're accredited, we will be one of the very best that you'll find within Nationwide. It's a certified agreement between um, NIAC folks to say, yep, we meet all the standards, we reach all the standards, and we ex exceed all the standards. So your children will be well cared of. They'll have the best programming that's available to them within the Department of Defense and the Army. Summer camp begins 17 June. Mass registration is on the 1st of June from 10 to 1400. You can see the sports director for the children there, and they'll take care of that for you, or the Cleos as well down in uh, Camp Casey. Summer sports clinics are to be offered, and those details will follow a little later. With that said, 
Here's some of the events that will be upcoming that are sponsored by and worked with in conjunction with the community and uh, the garrison and MWR. The 4th of July, July Independence Day celebration. If you've been to the one that was last year, I was not, but I understood it was a very, very super, super program. We expect it to be just as good, if not better. The DMZ trips in June and 8th and the 22nd, if you haven't been there, that's something very fascinating to look at. Um, take the opportunity to sign up for those trips and uh, go and visit. The Nami Island trips, if you haven't been there as well, that's also pretty much a uh, kind of extreme adventure type uh, events that go on there. Um, if you're into sports and outdoor, that's definitely something you want to take a look at and participate in. Warrior Adventure Quest, that's really a big, big, super uh, popular program right now. We're asking the units to really get involved, the commanders of those units to get involved and push that as much as they can down through the, through the ranks. And of course, summer camp, as we discussed a little earlier, it's getting ready to hit in. We've got some counselors coming in from the United States to help us and assist us in providing the super, super program this year. With that said, I can take any questions. Remember, again, I've only been here about 14 plus days, so I will try to answer your questions as well as I can. If not, I'm sure one of my colleagues here in the uh, theater will be able to help me with that. So, questions, folks, please. Yes, sir. Barbecue. Ah, the barbecue, yes. Immediately after this, at 1,600 hours, we have the uh, Mitchell's Barbecue Program. And if you haven't been there yet, you should try that out. It's a really, really, really super program. So you don't have to go very far. Up the hill, there's Mitchell's. We have also seating outside. We'll have food that's available outside as well as inside. And uh, you don't have to pay by the pound, really. You pay by, by the ribs. So it should be pretty quick, pretty, pretty fast to, to serve you and to, to get you through the lines. Um, it's a perfect season for that. It's a perfect time to do it. And again, it's only seasonal. So take advantage of it while it's still ongoing. And uh, I think you'll be enjoying that program. As well, in Casey, we're going to be beginning that program the 1st of June at the Gateway Club. Again, it's seasonal, and thereafter we will provide that program every Wednesday. So if you like ribs, you like hot dogs, you like brats, those type of things, that's available there. Outdoor and then indoor. Anything else, sir? Folks, questions, please. I was only kidding about not knowing the answers. <laughs> Okay. I really thank you. I really look forward to working with all of you. I think it's going to be a super, super tour for me. This is my second time to Korea. I was first in Busan, and I'm now here. And I look forward to working with all of you. My phone number, if you don't have it, it's extension 6869 here on, uh, on um, CRC. And if you need anything, give me a call. It doesn't matter who you are, what you want, what you need. I'm here to help and provide the great service that we can. Okay, lucky number. Zero two four four. Oh, check, it's mine. <laughs> Come on down, sir. Super. What's your name? Ken Rhodes. Ken Rhodes, and where are you from? DOL. DOL. Well, congratulations, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I will be followed by our ACAP specialist, Mr. Ken Schluter. Mr. Schluter. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to take you all on a short walk down memory lane and return to the year 2011. And in 2011, uh, the U.S. had a jobless rate of uh, running between 9.3 and 8.5 percent. Uh, at the same time, the jobless rate for our veterans who were from post 9-11 uh, uh, rang in at 12.1 percent. Uh, it, it, the same year, we had over 720,000 veterans that were unemployed in the United States. And probably the worst statistic of, of all was the fact that we had 29.1% uh, of our veterans that were in the 18 to the 24 year age bracket that were unemployed. 
Uh, so not only was this bad news, uh, but the military also had to pay unemployment compensation for these individuals. And in 2011, the DOD paid over $1 billion in unemployment compensation. Uh, the Army's piece of that was $515 million. Okay, so what has happened since then is that President Obama started an initiative uh, called the Veterans Employment Initiative uh, Task Force. And uh, he asked the Department of Defense, the, the Department of Labor, the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, several agencies from his office to get together and to revamp the current transition assistance program that were being used by the various branches of the military. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, President Obama signed the VOW Act into uh, law. And the VOW Act basically took uh, the, the core programs that were already in effect and made all of those mandatory for the soldiers so that they had to go through a whole series of, of programs. Uh, prior to this time, these programs were elective. Uh, now, what I've done on the slide here, if, if you look in the center portion, uh, when you revamp a program, of course, the first thing you need to do is to rename it. Uh, so they took the name TAP, which we've been using for the past 20 years, TAP standing for the Transition Assistance Program, and turned it into the Transition GPS. And again, you see across the top of the slide, I have it spelled out, Transition Goals, Plan, Success. So TAP now equals trans, or Transition GPS. And again, in the center column, I've built a series of steps which our soldiers have to go through right now before they can transition out of the military. And this applies to just about everybody in all branches of the military. Uh, you can see that the initial step is a pre-separation briefing. This lasts for two to three hours. Uh, but this can be done in our office or it can be done on the internet. Uh, then we have the soldier enroll in something called eBenefits, which is a website uh, constructed by the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, which has a whole bunch of information about applying for VA benefits, uh, things about housing, just about everything that the VA do does is located on this one site. Uh, of course, we give the soldier an opportunity to stop by and talk to the reserve recruiter so that he can continue to use his service, uh, his military uh, skills uh, while uh, pursuing the civilian employment. And this leads into our financial planning workshop. This is about a six hour workshop he has to go through. And at the end, the expectation is that the soldier will have a one year budget for his first year out of the military uh, so that he can actually see what kind of money he's going to need and he can, uh, this will focus him more sharply on, on his job search. Um, I remember when I got out of the military, I was coming out of the, the Marine Corps, out of the Vietnam War, and I had uh, decided that I needed to buy a car. I was about two weeks back to my home, and I went to the local car dealership. I picked out a beautiful little Volkswagen that was there, and I went into the office with a salesman, and uh, he started filling out the forms so that I could purchase the car. And, uh, got down to name address and he asked me where I worked and I said well I don't have a job yet and he actually took the paper in front of me and just ripped it right down the middle and it finally dawned on me that you needed a job before you could go out and get a car and I, like I said I guess I can't get an apartment either and, and uh, uh, that was true also so when we come out of the military some of us especially if you've been over in combat you know we're, we're not thinking about things like having to have a job to get a car and, and a house and we try to get that point across to all the soldiers before they leave. Uh, we, uh, we have something on an MOC crosswalk. This is the military occupational code. And we focus on translating the soldier's skills into civilian skills. And the deliverable from this is, is a gap analysis where we actually look at the skills the soldier has to offer. And then we look at what the job is that he wants to get, and we're looking for the skills, uh, the educational opportunities or, th or things that he needs to be able to match those two perfectly so he can be very competitive when he or she gets out of the military. Uh, we have a VA benefits briefing that tells you everything you ever wanted to know about the VA. 
and also embedded in that is the Disabled Transition Assistance Program. If you are getting out of the military with any kind of disability whatsoever, uh, you're able to go in and uh, uh, learn how to apply for uh, disability compensation or training programs that are provided to disabled soldiers. Uh, last but not least, we have the Department of Labor and Employment Workshop. And this is a three-day program. The Department of Labor actually has facilitators here in country that come over and teach this for us. And it covers everything from writing resumes to interviewing. Uh, they talk about translating your military skills. And it covers just about everything you need to know in, in one three-day package. Okay, those things are in place right now. The VAL Act required those to be in effect no later than uh, November 21st, 2012, and those are all up and running here at the Camp Casey ACAP Center. Now we have three other tracks that are coming that are supposed to be up and running by October 2013, so we still have a couple months to go on these. And the first track is an education track for soldiers that tell us that they want to go uh, to school when they get out of the military. And we're actually hooking these people up with, we plan to be hooking these people up with school counselors at the college or university that, that they want to go to. It's kind of going to be like a warm handover uh, to these individuals so that when they do get back home, they already have somebody that they've contacted and they can use those people as a point of contact from then on. Uh, the same thing in the technical training aspect. Uh, again, these would be technical schools, but we're also looking for that warm handover aspect so that they, again, have a point of contact there. Uh, the entrepreneurial uh, track, we just had a uh, two-day program at Yongsan where a professor from Syracuse University came over and taught a uh, two-day entrepreneurial program. It was extremely well attended. We had over 50 people there. They were hanging off the rafters. The professor asked next time that we only provide 20 at a time. Uh, a great success. Unfortunately, the Small Business Administration is telling us right now that they don't have money to provide these people on a continuous basis overseas. Uh, so we're looking for some kind of a fix for that right now. Okay, the good news, if you go over to the, the far right side, you can see that the U.S. jobless rate that was just announced for the entire United States is 7.5 percent. The jobless rate for the post-9-11 veterans in April 2013 is also 7.5 percent. So we're at parity with, with the whole country right now. Um, I also have a couple other statistics. Uh, veterans, I told you there was 720,000 of them unemployed back in 2011. Uh, right now, the number, they're down to 6.2% of the unemployed population. Uh, so they're doing much, much better than the U.S. jobless rate as a whole. Uh, the Army, uh, the first bill for the year came to $110 million. We multiply that times four, we come up with $440 million. Subtract that from the $515 million that they paid two years ago and we see that we're making definite progress in, re in reducing the amount of money that the Army is paying for unemployment compensation. Okay, one of the really neat things that's happened during this entire process is a turn towards using ACAP online, or what we call virtual ACAP. And if you can see the little picture, the snapshot that I got up in the upper left-hand corner, this is actually a screenshot from the virtual ACAP Center that you can reach online. It's actually a three-story building. It's got a plaza. It's got a roof on top of it where people can get together and talk. It's got counseling rooms. It's got uh, theaters. It's got all kinds of things uh, that soldiers can do. It has live counselors that you can interact with 24-7. And uh, it's, a, it's a really great way to do most of your ACAP program. Now, I put a list down there that says online now. All of those things are available online now um, on demand except for the DOL Employment Workshop. And the DOL Employment Workshop is available at the Virtual ACAP Center, but it's a scheduled, scheduled event, and they only give it two or three times a month. Okay, um, in order to access the Virtual ACAP Center or the ACAP's main address, you can see I have it listed up there. 
And all you need to do to access the virtual ACAP Center is have a user, an AKO username and password. If you use that to get into this, and you, again, you can get into it anywhere in the world. There's also a call center in the United States. This is back at Fort Knox that has counselors working 24-7, and you can call in from anywhere in the world. And uh, I was concerned for a while that you, it costs money to dial a 1-800 from here in Korea, uh, but I called the other day and called the operator and said, could you connect me to this number, and there was no problem whatsoever. Uh, at the very bottom of the screen, I have our Facebook address. And uh, we keep this updated. Two of our counselors work on this on a continuous basis. We have jobs. We have all kinds of information for you in there. Okay, I think the bottom line, uh, what I'd like you to go away with is the fact that this program does appear to be working quite well. So I keep encouraging you to send your soldiers. Uh, if you go back to the previous... If I go back to the previous screen, you'll see you can start ACAP. I'm looking down at the bottom on the left-hand corner. If you're retiring from the military, you can start 24 months before your retirement date. If you're simply ETSing, you can start 18 months out. And the sooner we can start working with you at ACAP, um, the better your chances are going to be to get employment when you get out of the military. Any questions? Okay, if there's no questions, I'll be followed by Sergeant First Class Tracy Owens at 176 Finance. And I think you got to do a drawing before you're allowed to leave. Oh. Right out of that box, that metal box. Uh, <laughs> Not your number. Oh, oh, I don't get to call this. <laughs> Okay, the number is 0176. 0176. Oh, we got one. Oh, 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 Sergeant First Class Tracy Owens. Good afternoon. My name is Sergeant First Class Owens. Um, I'm from the 176 uh, Finance Battalion, or not Finance Battalion anymore, uh, Finance Support Unit. Um, our mission in the Finance Support Unit is to uh, is to provide other fan support throughout the Korea Theater in Area 1. Our, spe our, special ser our specific services are we provide military pay services, PCS, uh, travel, in and out processing, special pay actions, uh, dispersing services, uh, PAC assistance visits, PAC certification courses, uh, UCFR briefs, uh, FMST missions, and pre-deployment briefs and SRPs. And every one specific entitlements, we have um, hardship, uh, hardship duty pay location um, for area one, it's $150 a month. OCONUS cost of living allowance for area one is based on, uh, is based on rank, time and service, location, uh, um, uh, daily rate, and um, it's based, it's a zero and a nine, which is reduced or, or the without dependence rate. And it's also uh, based on uh, for command sponsorship, based on the number of dependents you have that are command sponsored. We also have overseas housing allowance, which also is based on whether you have uh, command sponsored dependents or not. Um, the family separation allowance uh, is two hundred fifty dollars a month, um, and e e sixes and below are, will continue to receive meal deductions and. The uh, assignment incentive pay, the AIP, is 
for soldiers serving 24 months in Area 1, if you serve in 24 months, uh, whether command sponsored or not, um, and for if you're serving a 12 months, then you have to commit to the 24, and it's uh, for it's $300 per month. Our hours, uh, our hours of operation are from 0 09 to 16 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the customer service section. Is open during lunch. It's always we're always open. Uh, the dispersing section is closed for lunch because we only have one cashier. And finance office is closed every Thursday for Sergeant's time training. Do you have any questions for me? No. Uh, yes, ma'am. If if there are emergency situations, there there's always uh, uh, an exception. Um, if we if there's an emergency, just contact us, and we have not we have the people that will Do take you care of that. Post the number that, that we yes, ma'am. It's a it's a finance number. It's listed. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Any others? And then of course, it says that you know if the soldier goes through his chain of command, then the chain of command through the admin office. There are no other questions. I'll be followed by Mr. Oh, 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 oh. Draw. Draw. oh he told me not to draw. No, sir. Oh, draw. Uh, draw. All right. All right, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> Appreciate you, sir. Impediment. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Pritchy May, the uh, YC of uh, CRC TMC here, uh, and uh, we're just going to go over a brief overview of the medical services that we offer here in Area 1. All right. Okay. So uh, on <clears throat> today's agenda, uh, we'll just kind of go over the clinic capabilities, um, the um, space available care, which is only at uh, Camp Casey Area Health Clinic. Um, I really want to discuss about our acute care clinics um, in terms of you, them not being an emergency room or emergency department. Uh, it's very important that uh, everyone in Area 1 know uh, the emergency numbers and where to seek uh, medical services in any case of, of an emergency. Uh, so go straight into the emergency procedures, our no-shows, uh, and our access to care, and also kind of discuss the host nation hospitals that are in the area as well. Okay, uh, so uh, Camp Stanley, uh, we have a uh, aid station there, uh, OIC, Camp Briones, uh, just arrived, and uh, Sergeant Kimbrough. Uh, Camp Stanley and uh, uh, Camp Red Cloud um, TMCs, are, they cater predominantly to active duty uh, personnel, um, but that doesn't mean uh, if uh, dependent or contractor comes through the acute care, we're not going to take care of them. We're not going to uh, tell you to go to case to your uh, emergency hospital or anything. So, yes, you have a question? I, I do because I went there a couple of times to Camp Red Cloud Clinic, Medical Clinic, and I was told just that they couldn't take care of me. I had to go to, to uh, Camp Casey. Did you go, did you go through the the front desk, the PAD front desk. Some t the uh, the guidance that we give our PAD personnel is that we've uh, we've changed the procedures. Is when anyone who comes through the through the clinic, we tell them, um, you know, they're supposed to let them know that if it's anything that's acute in nature, to just go through the back, which is where our acute care practices is. When we mean we don't cater to uh, dependents or contractors, we mean active duty for. Uh, Stanley and CRC, the routine appointments are predominantly for active duty soldiers. However, if there's a condition that can be taken care of acutely, that's not, uh, there's no reason why we can't take care of you. The back. And if that occurs in, in the near future, uh, you can always uh, ask for the NCOIC or myself, the OIC, and we can uh, rectify that situation. All right. Um, for for Camp, Camp Stanley, uh, their active duty population has been increasing 
in the last few, uh, few months with the addition of the 23rd Camp and also another addition of the 4th Chemical Battalion from Camp Hovey. Uh, pretty much uh, Camp Stanley now has three providers instead of one. Uh, two of them added from the 23rd Camp, so uh, our active duty population that should be uh, getting seen more frequently than before uh, since the, the additional manpower. Uh, for uh, Camp Red Cloud, um, we offer uh, pretty much a varied, uh, varied of services. Um, we, during our duty hours, we have uh, x-ray uh, lab capabilities, uh, occupational health, uh, physical therapy, um, but it's still it's still somewhat limited because we are an aid station. So um, we don't in situations where additional services are needed, um, that's when we you know we send to the emergency uh, uh, emergency room to our area uh, host nation hospitals, which I'll discuss uh, later uh, in the presentation. Uh, but that's pretty much our manpower. And speak about the furloughs and sequestration. Uh, that shouldn't really affect us as much. Uh, the majority of our personnel is uh, military uh, active duty, and our civilians, uh, we've uh, figured out a way to rectify that by uh, using some manpower from KC whenever the uh, whenever uh, the day or the city when they'll be taking their furloughs. So it shouldn't really affect our uh, capabilities at all. Uh, so Camp KC is, the, is where the, all of our family members. It's pretty much a health clinic where family members are seen. Uh, currently, the way they've set up at Casey, to my knowledge, is that there are several CTAS around Casey and Holy, which means that the Casey Health Clinic now predominantly uh, can be catered to the family member uh, population, uh, since the majority of the CTAS caters to the active duty population. They really only go to Casey if additional labs are needed or additional uh, um, managements are also needed or uh, obviously pharmacy. Um, so it opens up a, a lot of appointment hours for the family members to be seen there. Um, obviously it has more manpower, it is a health clinic and it also uh, offers more services than our Stanley and, uh, and uh, CRS counterparts. Okay. And also uh, the furlough shouldn't affect them as well. Uh, the, as you can see, the majority of, of, of their staff are uh, KGS and uh, military uh, personnel. Okay. Um, that brings me to the space available care uh, at Casey. So, um, so basically what that is, because Casey's, uh, the, its main objective is family members and uh, active duty, um, if there's excess capacity uh, then, and you know, DOD contractor civilian comes in seeking medical services. If there's excess capacity, we'll make an, they will make an appointment for you to be seen. However, if it, there isn't any excess capacity when you do uh, in during that time, what happens is Casey has its own dedicated acute care clinic that is individually staffed compared to CRC and um, and Stanley. So if it's an acute issue then you will be seen at their acute care uh, clinic. However, if it's something that's uh, a chronic condition, then what they do is they will uh, help, they will work with you, and obviously with TRICARE, uh, to uh, get you a off-post physician um, or specialty to help, you, uh, to help you manage that chronic condition. Because, you know, obviously whenever you, you, you uh, meet a a new medical provider, one of the main things is continuity of care. So we don't want to take care of your condition and then we, know we don't see you again uh, three months later. So to, to, to rectify that, we'll help you man, uh, set up a provider that can see you on a routine basis for those chronic medical conditions if there's an unavailable space to be seen at the area health clinic, Casey. Um, okay. So Main topic really is our acute care clinic. So they are old 24-7, um, you know, two, uh, you can call them acute care clinics, you can call them after hour clinics. They're really after hours, after uh, 1630 really, um, but they're not emergency rooms. They, they are not. We, we do not, especially after hours, very, very, very limited uh, capabilities. Uh, X, we don't have x-ray, we don't have lab. Um, here at C 
OCRC TMC, we have two medics, uh, one driver, and then a medical provider uh, that is on call if any medical assistance is, is needed. However, emergency procedures, if we don't have that capability to actually manage in real emergency, because as soon as an emergency uh, arrives at the acute care, the next the, the next uh, decision is and you know we have to transport you to an emergency uh, facility where they have that capability uh, to manage your condition. So that is really the take home point uh, here for uh, for this presentation is you know anyone coming to a acute care clinic it's really you just screen you get triaged uh, if it's after hours they'll call the provider on call at KC they don't need to call a provider on call they have their um, their separate acute care area so there's all the provider there um, but there's really one of four um, dispositions that occur you get treated there depending on what the situ what the condition is uh, self care protocol you know, robocussin for cough, you know, it's over-the-counter medications. Um, if, if it's really not an acute issue that can wait to be seen, actual appointment, then we can make you an appointment the following day, as long as within 24 hours, which is our access to care for, uh, for acute appointments, or obviously anything that's an emergency, we will transport you to uh, the area hospital or transport you down to 121 in Youngsan, or Brian Hall Community Hospital is the name now, it's not 121. Okay, uh, so segue into the emergency procedures uh, of post emergency. Um, if you are having an emergency and you want a, uh, a English ang English language ambulance dispatch is zero two one three three nine, uh, please uh, program into your phones uh, for KC uh, or one one nine for Korean ambulance um, off post. Uh, on post emergency is at KC. It's zero five zero five seven three zero five nine zero. Six for any cell phone or obviously nine one one, and here, and uh, Stanley it's zero five zero five seven three two nine one one seven or nine one one. So never delay an emergency, uh, and and come to the area clinics, please. Uh, contact your emergency, uh, use the emergency uh, uh, numbers in case uh, if you think it's a true emergency, so we can you can get to the emergency uh, uh, department and adequately be cared for. Um, okay. Uh, just quick about the no-shows, it's really just, <clears throat> so the new policy uh, uh, or guidance um, from uh, 65th Med uh, is that uh, no-shows are any, if you're greater than 15 minutes um, um, to your appointment or you fail to show to your appointment, that's considered a no-show. Uh, later appointments, we'll try our best uh, to accommodate you by setting up a later appointment uh, that day. Um, the next day or within the week, um, but it's 10 minutes. Um, if you arrive 10 minutes after your, your scheduled time, it's considered a late appointment, and obviously we'll try our best to, to work with you for the late appointments. Um, and I only bring this up for the no-shows, is that when it happens, that basically that appointment time slot is basically going to waste because we're decreasing our availability of care or, uh, and, and our uh, staff um, productivity. Uh, by having that time pretty much not used um, for another patient. So uh, really, really, um, you know, uh, work with us. If you know you're going to be late, just notify us so we can uh, open that appointment slot for someone else who needs it. Okay. Um, our access to care pretty much uh, to the point, if you want to, if when you go into the clinics and you make an appointment, um, any acute appointments, has to be seen uh, within 24 hours. Um, so, uh, and and we try to maintain that uh, that guidance. So that is our access to care acute appointments within 24 hours. Any established appointments uh, for uh, routine management, we want to get it done within within the week. Uh, guidance is 28 days, but usually we have enough capabilities to to uh, to put you in for appointment uh, with your provider uh, within a week to two. Uh, referrals. Uh, referrals um, refer to either one two one, the host nation hospitals, and it's within 28, 28 days. If every referral, when your provider places a, a consult, uh, if you if you don't call to make the appointment within three days, that consult pretty much, you know, it's it's no go. So you have to uh, notify your provider to replace the con uh, to put the consult back in, so you can uh, go ahead and and make that appointment if it's past thirty days. Okay. Um, 
we have in the back a tree diagram, which pretty much indicates it's a, it's a it's an appointment line to one two one, and it's seven three seven care or two uh, seven three, and it's, it's pretty much an automated service on how to make appointments with the individual clinics at one two one. Kind of give you a guidance um, as to how to do that. Uh, if you ever uh, refer down there at Bryant and Olga. Uh, and last is our host nation hospitals, Area 1. We have St. Mary's H uh, Hospital and uh, Dongo University Medical Center. Pretty much these hospitals are teaching hospitals, 400 plus beds with many, many different departments that work with us and, and help us uh, manage not only our family members, our contractors, civilians, and also our active duty personnel. Obviously, our clinics uh, are not, we don't have all the capabilities, so we, and we don't have all the different specialties, it's even at Brian Allgood, so we have to seek consults and refer our patients out, and they do a great job in helping us manage and take care of our patients and uh, keep them and keep them healthy. So, uh, uh, and that's, and that's uh, the medical part. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, dental. Yes, yes. Where do family members go to get the teachers taken care of? Okay. Uh, for, for dental, I'm, I, I'm not sure with that, but I know for dental at, uh, at Brian Allgood, uh, they can be seen there at Brian Allgood. Um, here at CRC, I believe the dental, again, is predominantly active duty personnel uh, for, for CRC dental. Um, but Brian Algood, I'm, I'm sure they see family members. Stanley, I don't believe so. I think CRC and Stanley, they, they're, they're more geared to the active duty personnel, uh, for what I know. But um, I will find out more information about that one. I, I'm not entirely sure about, about anywhere else. All right. Oh, yes, sir. Sure, of course. Okay. Oh, one more, one more thing. Uh, Imegu, can you please stand? Uh, this is Imegu, uh, our medic. Uh, actually, she's a kill. She's one of our lab techs. Uh, she has some information uh, regarding TRICARE, how to get to St. Mary's, and it's, uh, different numbers uh, that you guys, uh, you know, if you can, you can take and, and keep if you ever need to uh, contact us. Or track her. Yes, ma'am. A quick question. Yes, ma'am. With the upcoming furlough, yes. I know at KC the pharmacist is just one civilian. Mm. Is that going to be manned by military personnel in her absence? Yes. Um, so for the same same with um same with CRC, our pharmacist is also a GS. So the one at KC, we have two uh, they have two farm techs. Okay, so whenever whenever the pharmacist, um, when the furlough occurs, the pharmacy will be manned by a farm tech. Um, and the only difference is uh, the farm techs, whenever they dispense out any narcotics, um, they have to get a doctor's uh, signature to say it's okay. But it, it's pretty much the same. It shouldn't really slow down um, the, the, the pharmacy's capabilities. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, they will. No problem. No problem. Uh. Yes. Sure. Yes. 
Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, sure. Concerning emergency essential civilians, we're yes. supposed to be entitled to the same medical services or the same level as active duty soldiers. We're Correct. Serving here as emergency essential, and it seems we've been having issues as far as getting seen and getting deferred down at Young Sun. And some of us are dual-handed as far as being retired military as well as being EECs, as far as emergency essential, uh, essential civilians. And we're getting kicked down uh, to Young Sun where we're supposed to be entitled to the same level of service as active duty soldiers. Um, okay, well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say kicked out, um, but uh, what happens what happens is 